The next folks I'd like to introduce are Mary Beth Brangen and Jim Heddles at the camera tonight, but they run an organization called Ecological Options Network. And they are some of the most inspiring people I have the pleasure to work with. Just completely sane and calm and working on the most scary stuff <laughs> that we can imagine. And uh, so please, Mary Beth, can you come up and uh, take over? Thank you. Well, it's a real delight to be in a room of interested, committed people. It's, um, it's a real honor to be speaking with you tonight and also to um, be following my nuclear spiritual godmother, Joanna. <laughs> 25 years ago when the Guardianship Project began, I was learning with the fire group, is what we called it, with Joanna. Now, tonight, I'm going to give you a, a, a report, a short partial overview of what uh, is happening in our state on this very issue of radioactive waste and how we need to be uh, involved in managing it, making sure that it's managed responsibly as possible and technologically responsibly as possible. So first of all, we're going to show you a short trailer of a documentary that we're working on. And uh, it shows the first step in dealing with the nuclear threat, which is to stop the production of the radioactive waste by shutting down our nuclear reactors. The And so we've had, as you already know, I'm sure, the um, sheer joy of having San Onofre nuclear reactors shut down and uh, giving us that empowering story to launch uh, uh, the shutdown of Diablo Canyon. So we're going to be um, showing that, and then I'm going to report on what's happening with the waste from San Onofre and uh, the latest on that, and then also on something called Fukushima Freeway Campaign. And we have actions for you to help us with. And I'm going to be over at the table uh, later and hope that you can come and sign up if you can uh, if you want to take some actions with us and help us with these campaigns. As the Fukushima disaster deepens three years later into a planet-wide emergency, with massive continuous daily radioactive emissions into the air, ocean, and biosphere. While officials deny the reality and risks, the nuclear industry fights to stop its renaissance from being rolled back in the U.S. and around the world. And citizens begin to understand the California-Fukushima connection. A new documentary from award-winning filmmakers counters nuclear industry lies and cover-ups. It tells the story of Southern California's recent successful campaign to rid itself of one of its nuclear threats. Environmentalists have tried for decades to close San Onofre down, and this morning, word from the Associated Press that Southern California Edison says it will be closing the troubled San Onofre nuclear power plant for good. Ah, thank you. What a day this is. I can't describe the emotions and uh, the relief to know that 
we're past this huge hurdle. We don't have to worry about 8 million people being exposed to a meltdown because of experimenting with a broken reactor. This has ramifications around the country. This is a seismic event in the nuclear industry. It looks at the people, organizations, strategies, and factors that forced a powerful corporation to bend to the public will. It traces the little-known history of the nuclear-free California movement. We need a mass movement again, like we had in the 70s and the 80s. All the alternative energies are zooming ahead, and the rest of the world has picked up on it, and we don't want to be left behind. In California, you have four reactors, like Fukushima, that are on earthquake faults, and that are in the tidal wave zone, two at Diablo Canyon, two at San Onofre, right on the ocean. Those nukes need to be shut down. We can do it. You can do it. A local story with global implications. It documents California's awakening to the deadly risks to human rights, public safety, the economy, and all future generations posed by nuclear technology, despite fierce industry attempts at cover-up. There's information that shows that Edison knew that these steam generators were defective before they were installed, and yet they installed them anyways. And in the process, they blew it. They blew it in a big way. They blew it, and the smoking gun is this big hulk of a nuclear power plant down on the beach leaking radioactivity into the community. And yet Edison is insisting on restarting this thing without fixing it first. I finally found my dream location uh, to, re to retire in. Gorgeous beaches, great weather. And now in one swoop, San Onofre could just wipe that out. When I asked the sheriff there, if there were to be some, God forbid, some tragedy, you know, how could people get away? She said, the highway, and you can't move on that highway in rush hour. A meltdown will make Southern California a permanent zone where nobody can live. And these are fundamental issues that are being dealt with not only here in Southern California, but are also issues that are being dealt with in reactor communities around the country. The idea that California would be nuclear free, uh, when all we hear is that there's some form of nuclear renaissance going on in the US, would be a massive blow to the nuclear industry, both in the US, but also globally. It's an empowering story of activists, nuclear experts, public officials, whistleblowers, journalists, and extraordinary citizens facing up to the threat of Fukushima fallout while working to prevent potential Fukushima-like catastrophes here at home. It's also the story of the growing solidarity between Japanese and U.S. activists as they unite to challenge the global nuclear establishment. The whole world is watching Fukushima. We need the United Nations at the General Assembly level to take action at Fukushima. The government of Japan cannot do it. The electric power company cannot do it. We need the resources of our species, the best engineers, the best scientists, and all the money in the world to stop this horrible disaster at Fukushima and all the other nuclear plants around the earth. This transition to a renewable-based economy must start now. The easy part is over. Keeping track of what's happening uh, with San Onofre and this power plant for the next few years it will be a lot of work. There's no way in the world that we are going to allow this nuclear power plant to become a nuclear waste dump. We, we really need, I think at this point, to focus on Diablo Canyon. and. Let's make California nuclear free. We got the final wake up call in Fukushima, and we need to phase out and shut down the 104 reactors in America. I will put it very bluntly we need to kill them before they kill us. Shut down the California Fukushima connection. Now we're blessed with having San Onofre shut down 
And the next phase of dealing with this is beginning, the guardianship phase of that nuclear waste. We have over 1,600 tons of high-level, deadly nuclear waste sitting on that site. And just October 2nd, the California Coastal Commission has issued a permit to Southern California Edison that is allowing Southern California Edison, the uh, owner operators of San Onofre, to go ahead with their plans for the storage of the waste. And what they want to do is put it in five eighths inch th thick stainless steel canisters and then bury it 100 feet from the ocean <laughs> right above the water table. And those of us who are watching carefully are very concerned that um, the, that the stainless steel that they're going to use is not even the strongest that you can get. It needs to be corrosive proof for at least, what, 35 years or so before there would be the possibility of moving it somewhere else. As you know, Yucca Mountain uh, was a terrible site technologically. You will be reading a lot of articles that say tech, um, Yucca Mountain was uh, a political decision to close that down or we would have had a repository by now. Well, that's not true. Yucca Mountain technologically was a mess. Uh, it was... It, was proven that there, um, the rainfall comes right through the mountain and there's a constant flow of water. And it would have got infiltrated uh, with radioactivity the groundwater underneath it that then flows out and is, provides absolutely necessary water for that desert area. The Western Shoshone Nation have been against this from the beginning, and it's their land that would be primarily affected and, and most immediately affected. It would, it would annihilate them. So this is uh, not a, a really viable uh, solution, but right now, in order to give the illusion of doing something with the waste, Congress, the NRC, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, as well as the utilities are fomenting a plan that those of us who are working on this call Fukushima freeways. Because what they want to do is take the waste and put it onto trucks and railroad tracks, the same railroad tracks that the oil trains are going on and exploding on uh, and causing fires on uh, these not well-maintained railroad tracks in our country. And uh, they also would maybe have to use barges on the Great Lakes and maybe even from Humboldt Bay down all the way to uh, Southern California along the coast of California, as well as from Diablo Canyon on barges down the coast to um, Southern California where they would then have to be put onto trucks and tracks and moved across the country. Most places that the waste is in, all these uh, 104 sites that are still open, all those sites, none of them are ideal for holding radioactive waste. And everybody would love to have a permanent place that would be safe to put it. But the planet is always moving. The planet has um, water everywhere, fortunately. It's not possible to put it in any place that will keep it totally safe from geological movement and incursion for 250,000 years. And in the case of many isotopes, into the billions of years, it's just not possible. So we have a real problem on our hands. We have a dilemma. It shouldn't be in on San Onofre's site 
100 feet from the ocean and right above the water table next door to Highway 5, the main artery north-south in that part of, of California. It shouldn't be there. It's in the midst of uh, 8 million people. It shouldn't be there. And yet there is no other place for it at the moment. So at least what we're saying, what we're advocating for, is that it should be put into thicker casks and um, that, that will give it a little bit more time before the corrosion uh, from the salt water and salt air can make through what, uh, wall cracks. Uh, and I could go on, but I won't with all those details. But please do sign up. I'm, we're going to show a two-minute video now that will, that's also um, talking about the Fukushima freeway and that problem. And then later it, in the program or after, after the program, if you could um, come and sign up, if you could be part of the campaign to educate people and to stop this from happening, we sure would appreciate it. This high-level nuclear waste is continually emitting radiation. Gamma rays and X-rays are constantly escaping the protective shielding. The cask will be loaded onto a truck or a train. It's like transporting an X-ray machine that's stuck in the on position and then paraded through your town. And you won't know when they're coming to town because no one is going to tell you and hundreds, maybe thousands are coming. Let's stop Fukushima freeways. So we need to be very, very careful. We need to be um, demanding transparency about what their plans are, and we need to be on top of this here in California. This is the first step in guardianship here in California. So I thank my um, godmother, Joanna, in this effort, and um, I really thank you, Cynthia, for organizing this tonight.